Hi there, I'm Alicia Puchta. I'm a PhD candidate in Dr. Don Bowers' lab, and I'm here today with Professor Mark McDermott, who's the program coordinator of the Immunology Education Program here at the McMaster Immunology Research Center. Hi, Mark. Hi, how are you doing? I'm great, how about you? I'm good. good. So today, Mark, can you tell us a little bit more about the McMaster Immunology Research Center, and specifically the Immunology Education Program? What are some of the most important and valuable aspects of this program? Sure. Uh, the Immunology Research uh, Program here uh, began about 30 years ago, mm -hmm. and we have an international reputation in a variety of areas. Uh, about three or four years ago, we moved into this brand new building, um, which was built for us. And it's a very beautiful building. <laughs> exactly. And uh, we have about uh, 14 faculty members in the program. Uh, we have anywhere between 50 and 65 graduate students from year to year, and that's complemented by a number of postdoctoral fellows and support staff. Um, the, probably the most important thing here are the people. Mm -hmm. and. The faculty is absolutely devoted to educating the students. So uh, when the student comes in here, uh, and usually enter in September, the vast majority, uh, they're really looked after, shepherded through the program, and our objective is to give them the best education they can, and that includes travel to scientific meetings, introductions to uh, people in industry and other academic institutions, so they'll have opportunities in the future as well and we work really hard at this. Uh, we're extremely well funded, so we can afford the, uh, the cost of uh, looking after people the way I've just described. And the second thing that's really important is the number of graduate students and the quality of them. To enter this program, you have to have good marks, mm -hmm. you have to have the right uh, scientific background, and, um, and it's competitive to find uh, a, lo a laboratory supervisor, such as Don Bowdish, who will uh, mentor you through the, through the several years you need to get a master's or, or a PhD uh, out of our program. Um, the students uh, themselves ha are, uh, are a very strong uh, body of people who mentor one another. You won't learn an awful lot by osmosis. The design of our building encourages that. We have a very large meeting area with, uh, with desks in it where people get together. Um, you know, all, all during the day, it's outside, right outside the laboratories. And that, uh, that mentoring also includes the technical staff and postdoctoral fellows who are here as well. Uh, but the graduate students are really the, the motivating force here because it's a very large complement of people who are excited about what they're doing. Um, the other thing is that because it's such a collaborative environment, people help one another. So you're not on your own here. There's always lots of people around to help, and that could be anything from uh, manually assisting with an experiment to teaching and so forth. So it really sounds like the program fosters a lot of collaboration. Absolutely, and it's not just within our program. We have collaborations outside of our program with the uh, Department of Biochemistry, Department of Chemistry, a little bit with physics. Uh, so the, the entire aspect of our program is to collaborate with whoever you need to make discoveries. That's what we're here for, is to make discovery. What about collaboration with other institutions? We have a lot of that. Uh, we send people to uh, other institutions to learn technologies, to learn topics in, in detail, and that's worldwide. It's not just in Canada or the United States, but we have, uh, so we have some collaborations overseas in China and in Europe, United Kingdom. Okay, Mark, can you tell me a little bit more about the financial support students and trainees receive here? Sure. Uh, students who come into the program are provided with a stipend that's uh, provided by their supervisor. In addition to that, they will uh, they'll work for the university, uh, maximum of 10 hours a week as a teaching assistant, and they're compensated for that. In addition, we have uh, two sources of scholarship funds. One is through the department. These are largely for travel. And the second source of scholarship funds is it within our own program. We have a number of donors who have contributed, and these are largely for travel, also to scientific meetings. So in terms of uh, funding of a student, um, uh, we provide uh, what is basically enough uh, for living expenses, mm -hmm. plus this, these extra funds that are to help you uh, develop a student develop um, their career through travel, and that's going to scientific meetings, presenting their uh, their discoveries, and meeting people who they will interact with in the future. Okay. So it sounds like funding is really down pat, but what about technical resources? What types of those uh, do students have access to yeah, here? We've been really lucky here. We're in this new building, and as we're all coming into the new building, we've been able to acquire what is absolutely state-of-the-art facilities in every aspect of research. Um, so we have that here. We also have access to state-of-the-art facilities in these other departments. We're not stopped from doing that. For example, our collaborations with the Department of Chemistry, we're using 
their instrumentation for, for a number of projects. So from a technical standpoint, at, in our program here, uh, there is nothing that is going to stop someone from, um, from being able to move forward uh, with, our, uh, with our experiments. And we're always sourcing the latest technology. So we're trying to stay absolutely up to date on a year-to-year -year basis. What about access to scientific services? There's a, there's a lot of services here. So we don't expect students to be able to do everything. Okay? And so many of the things that, uh, that you would need done, there's actually uh, technical people who will do this for a student. You take your specimens to them, they'll do the processing and the analysis and give you the results. That's a real time saver because you don't have to learn another technology that you're not going to use every day. When, just when you need it. And some of these technologies are, are complicated enough, it's best to have somebody who does it every day, mm -hmm. to do, it, do it well. Okay, well would you like to tell us anything else about the program? Uh, this is a great place to come. I mean, yeah. you, you come here, you, know, you get mentored, you have a lot of fun. I mean, it's, it's, discovery is fun, but you're doing it with other people and they're doing the same thing. So it really is a lot of fun. We have a lot of social interaction. We have a huge Christmas party. We have a huge summer barbecue. Students on a week-to-week, uh, -week, month to month basis get together, go for beers at the, yeah. at the pub, which is footsteps away. So it really is uh, really a fun place to, uh, to get your training. And I, I would definitely agree with that. I mean, the collaborative atmosphere is amazing, and the types of people you meet is just an unmatched education, I yeah, think. Yeah, it's terrific, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so thank you, Mark, for taking the time to sit down with us. Once again, I'm Alicia Puchta, here with Dr. Mark McDermott of the McMaster Immunology Research Center, who's the coordinator, again, of the Immunology Research Program. Thanks, Alicia. Thank you so much, Mark. <laughs> okay.